pound of lard, one pound fourteen ounces of olive oil, one pound fourteen, two pounds fourteen ounces of vegetable oil, and how much wax did you put in? About um, about eight and a half. Uh, about eight and a half ounces. But don't worry, we'll we'll put those we'll put those ratios on the uh, comment section in YouTube. Um, welcome, uh, it's Jeff again from DC Honeybees and with brother Ben uh, from Georgetown Honeybee Company, georgetownhoneybee.com. You can see him wearing one of our fun shirts. Um, his dog is visiting us. He and his dog are visiting us here in DC. And today we are making hot process soap. Um, hot process soap is a little easier to do or a little faster to do. And this is why we're going to try it here. Uh, not try it, we're going to do it. And this particular batch has, uh, the fats are lard, um, vegetable oil slash soybean oil, uh, extra virgin olive oil, and beeswax. And we're going to get that started on the stove to heat it up and to melt the solids. And then we will add our lye. Uh, and again, all of the ratios we put on the uh, comment section of the YouTube video. Um, the proportions of lye to fats is important, and different fats need different proportions of lye, which is why um, I don't want it to um, tell you now, but just write it down for you. Um, so let's heat this batch up. So in the vein of do as we say, not as we do, um, we have a measured amount of lye, uh, which is specific to the types of fats that we are using and the quantities of the fats that we are using. And we have a measured amount of water, which is also consistent with um, the uh, amount of fats that we're using. We are going to carefully pour the lye into the water. Uh, we should be wearing goggles and gloves because this stuff is nasty. Excellent warning. And then we're going to stir it in. What you'll notice is that as the lye dissolves, it will start to heat the water up. The lye is a necessary component of the soapification process and will convert the uh, oils into soap. But it's, uh, it's a nasty, caustic ingredient and you should be very, very careful of it. Also note, too, that our um, fats have all uh, uh, melted, and we've got um, just one contig contiguous pool of fat. Um, yes, you can go ahead and stir that. Make sure you don't spill it anywhere. And actually, why don't you go ahead and feel that container, because you'll feel it start to heat up. Is it heating up? Yep. Was it hot water? Nope, it's cold water. Yeah, it's definitely heating up. Um, it will heat up to north of 200 degrees, uh, depending upon the temperature of the water you put in. Um, it's important to make sure all the lye is completely dissolved before we introduce it to the fat. So we're going to finish stirring this up, and then we'll introduce the lye into our pot of fat. Okay, so we've, we've uh, incorporated the lye into the water. I'm going to take this, move it into the fat, and then Big Ben is going to, while he stirs, slowly add the lye mixture trying not to splash because this stuff is pretty crazy. The oil in the pan is in the 160 to 180 degree range, uh, thus the hot process moniker. And um, usually if you were doing a cold process, we would want these at about 100, both at about 110 degrees and then we would mix them with the uh, stick blender until they hit what's called trace. With the hot process, uh, the um, solidification or the chemical reaction happens much more quickly. Um, we are going to use a stick blender though, and we're going to keep some heat on underneath. Can I bring out the blender right now? Yeah. Just put it right, right inside the um, okay. And just be careful not to splash. But you'll notice how quickly this thickens up.
we stick blended this for about five minutes. It's reached the stage of trace. We do have the heat on underneath. And now we'll let it cook. And as it cooks, it um, should thicken. And we should see it actually foam up. And as it starts to foam up, we'll break it down. And um, that's an indication that the um, soap is starting to cure. What you'll notice as the soap cooks is that it will foam up. As it does that, you'll want to break it down by stirring it. And the trick here is after it goes through this foaming stage, it'll go it'll convert to a stage that's a little more gel-like, almost looks like Vaseline. And that's what we're looking for. That means that the soap is fully cured. And then we'll add our adjuncts, which are our super fats, to give the soap some moisture, and as well as some honey, which is a um, water retention agent. Humectant, I think is the word. So, um, describe your last comment. Uh, ew, it's gross? Is yeah. That it? <laughs> oh, it's very Vaseline-y. So this has changed consistency. It was, we, we've been um, cooking it on low for probably 30 to 40 minutes, and it's been bubbling up, and then we've come in, and, uh, and when it bubbles up, it sort of looks like cornmeal. And now we've been, um, as we've been stirring it down, Ooh, <laughs> as we have stirred it, it gets a little more glisteny, and, and some people have described it like Vaseline, but it is certainly not cornmeal-y anymore. So we're at the point during the, in the hot process where the soap is essentially finished and we can add our essential oils. So we're going to do that next. Hopefully you can see with this HD camera sort of that consistency and that color that we're seeing here. Okay, we're now going to add our adjuncts to our basic soap recipe. Um, what's happened here is the um, the lye has converted essentially all of the oil that we had here into um, into soap. And in order to make our soap slightly more moisturizing, we're going to add what's called super fats, or our, we're adding super fatting materials. In this case, it's going to be uh, a few tablespoons of apricot oil and a few tablespoons of sweet almond oil. And then we're also going to add some honey, or Ben is going to add some honey, right. so that we can, um, um, honey is also um, helpful to the skin. So add both of those, yes, go ahead and add those, and uh, stir those in. The honey, you know, again, it's a, it's a few, it's a, the honey's probably a quarter of a cup. This is our DC honeybees honey that we raise here in the Washington DC area. Make sure it's fully integrated into the batch. This stuff is pretty thick now. We've turned the heat off. Ben claims to go to the gym, so I presume that he will be able to master the whisk in a rather manly way, although he's missing the edges right now. Well, I don't want to spill. I'm the master of the whisk. While Ben's doing that, uh, I have a form here that I've bought from Brushy Mountain um, Bee Supply. This form is, I'm going to guess, around um, 10 by 12. And, we are, and I've lined it with parchment paper, and we are going to pour the um, soap mass into this mold and let it harden in here, and this will be the basis from which we will um, be cutting our bars. And because we've done the hot process soap making, we'll be able to, th this mass will solidify overnight, and we'll be able to cut bars tomorrow. Into the mold, we pour our soap,
Now this is uh, easy to clean up because it's now just full of soap. However, do not put this directly in the dishwasher. Rinse it out first and get all the soap residue off. If you put it in the dishwasher, it will foam up and uh, cause a mess in your house. In the mold, and you can use any kind of mold. I just happen to open this mold. But you can build your own box. I'm going to smooth out the top. And I banged it just to get some of the air bubbles. Uh, we want to avoid any major voids as it cools and try to get it as even as possible and as smooth as possible on top. Don't want to, don't want to spill the wine. And what we're going to do is let this cool overnight. And then tomorrow, we'll come back and cut bars from this. And those bars, although essentially fully cured, because they've gone through the hot process versus the cold process of soap, will still need, will still have significant amounts of water in them. And so for the sake of improving the longevity of the soap and the consistency of the soap, you'll want to let those bars dry out for a few weeks. Um, although you could use them immediately. And this is the end result. Do you cap these off or no? This thing? No. So what I'm going to do... Is I am going to... Um, put a piece of foil on top just as a way of smoothing it out. Because this one edge will be one edge of the soap bar. So you want it to be as neat as possible. And there's nothing wrong with having it being a little rustic because, heck, these are homemade bars of soap. But neater is better. You know what, I'm going to use a piece of parchment for that. I thought that was going to be a little, how the foil was going to work. Again, is try to get it even and smooth so that when you cut bars they can be as uniform as possible. Nothing wrong with a little rustic, but better to make it look as good as you possibly can. So there you have it. So we'll let that um, cool. And then tomorrow we will um, cut bars. So stay tuned. Day two. It's been uh, about 12 hours since we made the soap. And um, we'll just dented it a little bit. You can see it's hardened. So um, now we'll just liberate it from its case. You want to do that, dude? You want me to lift this up? Uh, you know what I'm doing? Actually, once you open it up from this side first, it's got a hinge. Do anything I can switch. Oh, that'll do it. Hold on, you just Right. Get rid 
part the paper off. <clears throat> Get my fingernails. It's tough. Yeah, they just, yeah. It's coming. Excellent. Uh, flip it. I might get a little dent in here, but it's okay. Because what we'll do is we'll um, cut these edges off here to neaten it up um, and get some. But then that's really it. It's got the consistency of sort of um, medium hard cheese. So we've we've un un uh, molded our our block which has the consistency of sort of cheddar cheese softer semi hard cheese you can see that there are some raggedy edges uh, which we will cut off and the bars will actually we'll, we'll cut it this way to make bars and we'll just use a regular knife for that see it cuts very easily. It still needs to cure so it's still soft. And don't fret the, uh, the scraps because we'll use them to make French mill soap. But you can see we'll just make a set of bars right here. And it's okay if they're a little rough looking. Because this is homemade soap after all. And just for demonstration purposes, we try to make them about three inches. Try to make about three inches a piece, so not to get overly anal. Have three bars of soap. So here's some scrap at the end, and we'll save that. And then we've got three bars of soap that we can sell. What we'll do is we'll let these sit out and dry out completely. We'll continue to make bars from the block. Um, they are still soft because of the water content, but again, give them two weeks and they'll firm up. You could start using the soap right now. Uh, however, it'll be better when it firms up. And that's how you make um, hot process soap. So don't forget to follow us where? GeorgetownHoneybee.com uh, And also DCHoneybees.com There you go.